Dealing with DOM mutations in vanilla JavaScript is difficult, but Mutation Observer makes it just a little bit easier. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're going to talk about Mutation Observer and all the amazing use cases for it. So to get started, I have a really simple HTML page. You can see here we have a parent, which has an ID and a class of parent, as well as it has three children inside of them. And you can see on the right-hand side of my screen in the top section, you can see these three different children. And I also have these children editable, so I can actually just change the text inside of them as I need. I also have the console open down below because we're gonna be doing a bunch of stuff in our script file here, and I wanna make sure we can see our console. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna show you how you can create a mutation observer. So we can create a mutation observer, and this is coming from a class called mutation observer. So we just create a new mutation observer, and this mutation observer constructor here takes one single argument. And this argument is a function that is going to be called every single time your mutation observer observes some type of mutation in the DOM based on some criteria we define in a little bit. And this function here takes a single property into it called entries, and this entries is an array of all the different mutations that occurred. For now, I'm just going to do a simple console log of this entries. It's going to make it a lot easier for us to understand what's going on with this. And then what we want to do is we actually want to set up our observer to make it observe something. Because right now we created an observer, but we haven't told it what we want to observe. So to do that, we can just say mutation observer, which is the thing we just created. We can call the observe function, and this takes in two parameters. The first is going to be the thing we want to observe, and the second is going to be all the options for that. So let's just get to the parent element. We can say const parent is equal to document.query selector. We want to get that parent that has the class of parent. And we can observe that parent object. And if I save, you're going to notice immediately we get an error. And that's because essentially with Mutation Observer, when you observe something, you need to tell it what you want to observe. Because Mutation Observer can observe literally every single thing about an element, but we only want to observe specific things. So we have to tell it in the options what we want to observe. And as you can see, there's quite a few different options that we can observe here. The first one we're going to do is child list. If we just set child list to true, what this tells our mutation observer is it says, hey, anytime we make changes to the children of this element, we want to log that mutation. Essentially, we want to call this function with those changes. So now that we've done that, we've gotten rid of all the errors. So now we need to actually make changes to our child list. I can just say parent.children, and I can get the first children, and I can just remove it. So what I'm doing here is I'm just removing a single child. So if I save this, you're going to notice we get something being printed out. And this is being printed out because when we remove a child, we are mutating our child list, which we are observing, and our observer is printing out that inside of our entries, and we're just logging it right here. So if we look at this record, you can see it's an array that has one single object in it because we made one change to our child list. And inside of here, we have a bunch of information. The most important information you're going to notice is we have this type section down here. This tells us what is the thing we're observing. In our case, we're observing a child list. But if we are observing a bunch of different things inside this options here, this type is going to let us know which one of those is the thing that we're actually observing. Next, we have the target. This target is essentially the thing that we are currently observing. So in our case, we're observing our parent. But the nice thing about Mutation Observer is we could say, you know, we want to modify our parent and we want to observe here our first child. So now we're observing two different things. So since you can observe multiple things with a Mutation Observer, this target right here tells us exactly which one of those things we are observing. In our case, we're only observing one, so the target is just the parent. Then we have this added nodes and the removed nodes. So anytime that you're dealing with a child list, the removed nodes is going to tell you all the nodes that are removed. So in our case, this child right here is the thing that we removed. And also added nodes is going to tell you when you add something. So if we just come in here, we say parent, dot append child and we just say document dot create element and we just create a brand new div inside of here so now we've created a brand new child this empty child at the very end here and you can see we have two entries inside this mutation record the first one is going to be for removing that child because we did that first and then this second entry here is going to be for the child we added you can see up here our added node is that div and that div corresponds with this third div that we have added to our container right here and you notice there's nothing in the remove node section now you will notice that these records actually show up inside of one single array and the reason for that is the way mutation observer works is every single time that you make changes to your dom it's going to take all the changes that happened between the last time they were rendered to the screen and this current time and they're going to put them all inside of one array so since removing this child and adding this child both happened at the exact same time they're showing up inside of one array here if we were to do a set timeout for example we just put a set timeout 
and then we put the code for adding a child inside of here. We say it just occurs 100 milliseconds later, and we say, if you're gonna notice, now we get two different calls to this mutation observer function. The first one is going to be for when we removed that element, and then the second one is going to be an array for when we added that element, as you can see up here. So the nice thing to note about this is every single time that the document, our screen, changes its content, our mutation observer is going to take all the changes that occurred and put them inside this entries array for us. So the array could be really large or it could be really small depending on how many changes were made. Now another important thing to note about this mutation observer is we just come in here and say mutation observer. If we want to stop observing, we can just say disconnect. We call this as a function and what this does is it takes everything that we're currently observing and it stops observing it. So if we call observe and then we call disconnect, you'll notice we get nothing printed out to our screen. Even though we're making changes to our parent, we actually stopped observing it by calling disconnect here so we're no longer looking for those changes. So disconnect is really important to know because that allows you to stop observing changes that you're currently observing. Now the next thing I want to talk about is some of the additional properties we can pass in here. So currently we talked about child list. The next thing I want to talk about is attribute. So if I set attributes to true, what this is going to do is, is every single time I make changes to an attribute, this could be like a class, an ID, a data attribute, any attribute at all on the element itself, it's going to log out that change. So what we can do down here is we can just say, hey, parent.id is equal to new ID. Now when I save, you can see we get a new mutation record. If I open this up, you can see the type down here is attributes because that's the thing we're checking. And you can see in this section here, we have our attribute content. We have our attribute name, which is the attribute we changed. In our case, ID. We have this namespace, which we really don't have to worry about. And then finally, we have this old value. Right now it's set to null, even though if we look here, our parent has an ID of parent. And this is because if you want to check the old value, you actually specifically need to specify that in your options by saying attribute old value and setting that to true. Now what we've done here is we said, hey, we wanna check our attributes and we wanna check the old value as well. So now this is going to show us that old value. And if I just save this and I make sure I spell this as true, come over here to my mutation record, open it up, you can see the old value now says parent, which if I look at my HTML is the ID of my parent before I changed it. And now our attribute name, the thing that we're changing right here is ID. So that's the really nice thing about attributes. You can check the thing that we're changing as well as the old value that we changed. And something else you can do with attributes is sometimes you only care about certain attributes. Well, you can set an attribute filter, and this is just an array that takes all the attributes you want to check for. So for our case, let's say that we want to check for the title. Anytime the title changes, then we want to make, you know, a mutation record for it. If I save, you notice nothing shows up on our screen. And that's because our title never changes on our parent. If instead this was ID though, and we save, you now see we get that record showing up and that's because our ID is the thing that's changing and we're only checking for ID changes. So if we come in here and we change the title, for example, here, you'll notice we get no record because we're not checking for the title, we're only checking for the ID itself. Now, pretty much the last major thing that you can do with the mutation observer is going to be for checking the character data. So essentially the text inside of something. If I set character data to true, that's going to be checking if the text inside of this element changes. But something interesting to note is our parent has no text, it just has children. So let's get one of the children. Let's just say we'll get the first children right here. So we're getting the very first child, this one that says child one right here. We're checking to see if the character data changes and we can just do that like this. And now when I change the data inside of here, I'm changing the text, but you'll notice no mutation observer is firing. The reason for this is because mutation observer only checks for that element to see if the actual text changes. And the way that HTML works is text is actually a node. So inside of our index HTML, we have this div, which is our child. That's the thing we're observing. Well, this text right here is technically considered a node, and that node is a child of this div right here. It's pretty confusing, but if we go back into our script here, we can say dot child nodes. So now we're getting the child nodes inside of this div called child, and that child node is an array, and we only care about the first element because that's going to be this text here. So let's say child nodes of zero. Now when I save and I change the text, you notice we're getting these mutation records showing up. And you can see down here, it says character data is the thing that changed. And if we wanna check for the old character data, we can just make sure we set character data old to true. Now when I change my text, you can see that it has the old value right here, which is child one. And then obviously our new value is up here and it's saying we changed the data inside of it. So the important thing to note when you're dealing with character data, you have to do it on the node itself. You can't do it on the element, which in our case is this child here, because the element doesn't have the text. It's the text node inside of that element. Now this is something that's confusing and it's difficult to deal with because a lot of times you don't remember to put this on the end here. So instead what you can do is you can do a modification on a subtree. So with the mutation observer, if we come in here and we set subtree to true, what this does is it says, hey, what I wanna do is I wanna do a character data and a character data old value mutation observer. And I wanna make that mutation observer on the element I pass in, which in our case is the parent, 
And I also want to make these same exact observations on every single element inside this parent. So that's going to do it on this div right here for the child. It's going to do it on the next child, the next child. It's also going to do it on the text nodes inside those children. And if those children had children inside of them, it would do that on them as well. Essentially, by doing subtree set to true, it's the same as saying mutation observer observe of parent and then every single thing inside that parent all the way down as low as you can go. That's essentially what subtree allows us to do. So now if we change our text here, you can see we're getting those mutation records printing out because we're changing the text of the text node that is inside of our child, which is inside of this parent element here. We could even go a step further and we could say we're going to do like attributes, for example, where we set that to true. And let's say inside of here, I take my parent ID and I set it equal to test. You can see we get a record being printed out because we changed that parent, which is something we're observing. But if I take the child, so I go children, get the first child, and I do that, we also notice we get that mutation record being printed out for the child. And that's again because we're observing all of the things inside the parent by setting subtree to true. So if you ever want to just do a bunch of mutation observers on a bunch of elements all inside of one element, that's going to be where subtree is going to be your friend. And that right there is all there is to the mutation observer. There are two other observers out there, the resize observer and the intersection observer. I have videos on them linked over here. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you check those out. With that said, thank you very much for watching this video and have a good day.